Did you know in C Sharp you can easily print out a list using for each, but not this one? Let's have a look at an alternative. So we can use the numbers list directly followed by a dot, and we can actually just type in for each. And accepting the suggestion we get from Visual Studio by pressing tab, then we can use x, which is our local variable, which will go through each one of these numbers, gets placed into x, and then we can use a console write line just to print it out. But to put it all in one line, we can use a console write, use string interpolation, wrap the x around in curly brackets, and put a space. If you want to learn about string interpolation, click the video in the top right hand corner to get more information. So that's one method, so if you run that, we'll get all the output in one line. Let's explore another pattern. So we can actually use the join function that's inside the string library. So we can access that by typing in string.join, followed by an open bracket, and then we need a string separator, and then the actual object that we want to print. So in this case, we just want to print a space like we have here, or you can do comma space, it's really up to you. And then followed by a comma, and then we simply type our numbers in. And because this will return us back a string, we need to actually insert it somewhere. So we can use CW tab and place it straight inside the console write line. And just to place these on separate lines, let's just put a console write line and run the code. And now you can see they're in different lines and we get the same output. And of course, this one is using commas as well as a space. And if we wanted to extend this one with a comma, we can literally just type in comma right here and let's run it again just to verify. And there we go. The output's exactly the same, but not always. So the problem with using this for each method is the same way as using the for each loop is that it's going to print out this every single time that you do it, which means this is going to have a comma space right here right at the end. Now the good thing about string.join, this will only happen on the second last item. So it'll go all the way through to eight, print out the comma space, and then once it hits nine, it also won't print out the comma space. So it's a bit more handy than using the for each. So it's quite easy to just use the string.join. So this pattern can also be used by a dictionary. So if you had a dictionary of string and ints that represents a scoreboard, we just have ABBA 300, X 100, Y 200, and Z 300. So this will be our key and this will be our value. So what we can do here is we can say the scoreboard, convert it into a list, and then we can run the for each. And the reason why this works is when we hover over the two list, you can see it creates a list of key pair values that goes into a string and an integer. So when we do our for each, we can do exactly the same principle and print out X. But in this case, X is going to be a key value pair. So we actually get the string and the integer as the key and the value. So when we can wrap this inside the string interpolation again, and we can do X dot key space X dot value. Now, if we print that one to the screen, then you can see we get the values here. Of course, we want to put these on separate lines. So maybe for this one, we can actually just use a console write line directly. And there you go. So just to sum up this video, so instead of using a for loop, we can use a for each. But the problem with the for each is if you use a comma space, like in this example, it's going to include it in the last item as I shown at the start. So to overcome that, we can use a string dot join and then just place it inside here and it won't include it in the last item for us. And if you ever wanted to use the for each inside the dictionary, you can do a scoreboard dot to list to convert it into a list and then run the for each inside that. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you. I have an ultimate C Sharp Masterclass clause linked underneath this video if you're interested. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.